when Hertz applied a high voltage AC current across this gap, sparks were produced. These sparks were also producing electromagnetic waves. In this case, they were producing radio waves. Hertz also noticed that when he held this receiver loop near the setup, that a secondary spark was being produced between the gaps there. The reason for this is because of the magnetic field. The magnetic field was going in and out of the loop. This was creating a change in flux in the loop. And according to Faraday's law, an EMF will be induced. And when this EMF is induced, a spark is produced across the gap. Hertz also noticed that metal sheets reflected the radio waves that are produced. So he placed a concave metal sheet on the left hand side here and this was able to reflect the radio waves that were sent in this direction and they helped set, focus them and send them towards this direction. The first experiment he did was have another metal sheet over here and when the wave, a radio wave, travels in this direction it will reflect off the metal sheet and be traveling in the opposite direction. So when this happens a station wave is produced this is because the two waves that are traveling in opposite direction superpose, producing nodes and antinodes. He was able to determine the position of these nodes and antinodes by moving the receiver loop between the transmitter and the reflector. So at the positions where it was a node, he, there would be no sparks because there are, the electromagnetic waves would cancel out and there wouldn't be uh, any EMF induced there, while at the antinodes you'd get the most number of sparks. So using this he was able to and he was able to measure the distance. For example, in this question here, he was able to measure the distance between five nodes. So for example, from one, two, three, four, five. So between five nodes. But as you can see that's four four loops. So what you need to do is divide that distance between the five nodes by four. So always do three point eight divided by the number of nodes minus one. So this gives me a distance of 0 0.95 meters. Now that, however, is only half a wavelength. So I need to multiply that by two. So this gives me a wavelength of 1.9 meters. I've also got the frequency. This is determined by the transmitter. So if I multiply, I can get the, wave, uh, the speed of this wave by doing wavelength times frequency. So if I do that, so I've got 1.9 times 158 times center to the 6 meters um, uh, hertz, that gives me 3 times center to the 8 meters per second, which as you can see is the same as the speed of light and the same of electromagnetic waves. So he noticed that, well, this is the same as Maxwell's electromagnetic uh, wave speed. So therefore, radio waves must be electromagnetic waves, just like light waves. That was his conclusion. The second experiment he did was to rotate the receiver loop along this axis here. So as he rotated it, he noticed that the sparks produced decrease. This is because um, uh, there's less magnetic field going through the loop at, at right angles. So if you remember, magnetic flux has to be going at right angles, only the component that's going at right angles to the, to the loop that counts. So that magnetic field component that's going right angle decreases. And eventually once you've rotated by 90 degrees, it becomes zero. So there's no, no more sparks produced because there's no more change in flux in the coil and there's no more EMF induced.